Okay, and we're live on the Niche Agent. So today we got a great guest. It's Jill Price from Remax in Peterborough. So Jill, why don't you take a quick second and tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here. Hi all. Okay, I'm Jill Price. I work in the Bancroft and Peterborough areas and I do a lot of waterfront properties. Um, my market is mostly listings. Um, and I have a huge referral network that I've been working with in the last few years that's really been increasing my business. I'm a single mom of a very beautiful five-year-old, so it's tough to juggle it all sometimes, but we make it work. Um, I'm currently the number two agent out of 130 agents at my office, and it took me three years to get there, so I'm proud of that accomplishment. That's about it. Good. So your specialty is? Waterfront. Okay. So how have you, when you got started, have you always been doing waterfront or is that something that's new to you or is that something you've been working on? Yeah. Well, I grew up on the water and in um, a community where we have a lake about every five kilometers. So uh, some of my first listings were definitely waterfront. So I have been dealing with waterfront right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. okay. So why specialize in waterfront? Is it just because of that's, there's a lot there? Is it because of the price point or is it something you're comfortable with? Is there a reason you wanted to specialize in waterfront properties? I think it just kind of happened that way. I think once you have a few waterfront property listings, you gather a pretty good buyer pool and then obviously you need to find cottages for these buyers. So it just kind of happened that way. Uh, the price points obviously are a bit more attractive than residential real estate in the small communities. So that helps. Also, it's people's second properties, so you know they're very upbeat. You don't often get divorce situations of people buying cottages, or um, a lot of people even hand them down to their families, and so we get to deal with their kids eventually. Um, I feel that once people are in the waterfront market, they rarely leave the waterfront market. Right. So right. they um, upgrade their cottages. So. I usually try to keep on my uh, database because they are eventually going to upgrade. Okay. So can you give an example of the kind of numbers you're doing just so people have a scope of, of what t how much business you're doing, especially with waterfront properties? Uh, sure. I have currently 86 listings. Wow. My goal is to have 100 listings. This has been a goal of mine for quite a few years and I have not been able to obtain it yet, but I'm still working at it and I'm confident that I will get there at some point. Um, I sell about, on average, about 60 properties a year, and I would say 70% of those are waterfront. Okay. Now, is it just you? Do you have a, a team, an assistant, anything like that? I have been on my own for the last 10 years, and I current or I recently hired a full-time assistant, a licensed assistant. Okay. She does all of the office work and I do all of the appointments. So she doesn't do my open houses or run with my buyers or go to any listing appointments. She's strictly in the office and helps me with the day-to-day -day stuff. Wow. Okay. Now you said the majority of your business is listings. So do you know what kind of the proportion of, of listings to buyers? Uh, yes. Um, I'm about 70-30, okay. so 70% of my income comes from listings. It's a good good split. Um, so for you, what what is a typical buyer and seller in your area? Like you said, there are obviously cottages. Are they people buying and selling them as homes, or like what's a what's a usual buyer like for you? Or seller? Uh, well, about five years ago, I had all the dot-com millionaires coming up and buying waterfront properties, and then I saw a lot of young families coming up and buying cottages. I'm now seeing these families uh, rent them out through my cottage rental business in order to offset the, the higher taxes. Uh, but right now, my almost my whole market seems to be retirees from Toronto. So for the listeners who don't know, how far is Toronto from your area? Two and a half hours. Bancroft is two and a half hours from Toronto and two and a half hours also from Ottawa. Okay. And then my Peterborough cottages are only an hour and a half from Toronto. Okay. So for you, you said you were taking over a new area. You've got two areas you're working. Where was your initial area and, and why the expansion into the other? Side? I was born and raised in Bancroft. Okay. And that um, I, I do have a very good uh, business in Bancroft, but I felt in the wintertime, the business kind of died and so did my income. So I broke into the Peterborough area to try to offset the costs in the winter and try to work my Peterborough business a little bit more in the winter time and right. up in Bancroft in the summertime. Yep. Yeah, because uh, I mean, my parents had a cottage in, in Bancroft for years and it is a very cottagey area. It's, it's more cottagey than 
I mean, Peterborough has a lot of waterfront properties, but there's also a city and there's more people day to day. So you, or you're, you're finding the, the winter business is coming from the Peterborough, you said? Yes, it is. People are still coming up in the winter time and looking at cottages. You know, we do have a lot less harsh winters now, so a lot of people are still shopping in the winter. Some people that are shopping in the winter, I find, are very serious. They're cash buyers. They're wanting to be into their cottage on May long weekend with their families. Wow. So, you know, you do get the odd cottage buyer in the winter time, but it's definitely um, beneficial to reach out and get some other markets, I think. Okay. So, do you find in that off season, are the prices a lot lower? Is there just less inventory? Or what's the difference between that winter market and summer market for, for Less cottages? inventory for sure. Our whole uh, cottage market seems to revolve around the Cottage Life Show. So the Cottage Life Show is usually the last weekend in March. And as agents, we try to convince our sellers, obviously, to try and list before that date so that they will get maximum exposure for their listings. Um, and then we, we usually meet a whole bunch of buyers at the show. After the show... Um, I'm sure all the agents that are attending are booked for the next four weekends. People wait until after the show to come up and look because people are still listing the day before the show. If you come up and look at cottages the, the week after the show, you're going to see the, the broadest range of inventory of the whole year. I find that in July and August, we don't actually get a lot of serious buyers. We get a lot of maybe... Um, cottage renters who have the dream of buying a cottage and get back to the city and uh, find that they can't get the financing. So a lot of tire kickers are happening in the summer and people are on holidays. People are, you know, visiting grandma and doing little league and people aren't generally purchasing properties in our area in July and August. So that's uh, a good time for me to have a little bit of a break. And then the fall market is really hot. Uh, I think it's a lot of people that probably missed out on multiple offer situations or just didn't find what they were looking for and have made a decision that they're sick of hanging out with real estate agents every week and <laughs> they want to be able to drive up in the spring and enjoy their cottage. I don't know who could get sick of hanging out with us, but... I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so for the the fall market then, is it a different type of buyer? Is it someone looking yeah. for a winter escape or is it, is it, is it a different situation? It's cash buyers um, that that lost out in the summer or in the spring market. That's that's what I feel. I also think that sometimes people um, are buying for maybe tax reasons if they're going to rent it out or so all the people scrambling with their cash at the end of the year. I often see some people uh, purchasing for rental potential before the end of the year to offset right. some taxes for them. Yep. Uh, and people are even buying with ice on the lake. You can't see the shoreline. They're going by summer pitchers. And so obviously those are the serious ones. Uh, I don't think that there's a whole lot of difference in price between the spring and the fall market, except that the spring market sometimes does bring multiple offer situations. And of course, you would get over list price. Right. Yep. <clears throat> so for you, if you are showing properties in the winter, you'd mentioned you have some pretty unique ways. You, you take people on snowmobiles and things like that. It's obviously a different experience in the winter showing properties. Yeah, that's right. You know, sometimes it can be very frustrating, but I try and make it fun. And I'm very familiar with the area and the roads and the trails, so I can pretty much tell whether we're going to have any difficulty getting in. I do have a snowmobile, and I have shown many properties from the back of my snowmobile and sold many properties from the back wow. of my snowmobile. <laughs> I've often taken clients fishing into different lakes to prove to them that there's good fishing. Yeah. Uh, I'm very knowledgeable of the lakes in the area because I do like fishing and boating. So I can often tell you um, the depth of the lake, any fish species, um, how many residents are on the lake. So I'm very knowledgeable when it comes to individual lakes in our area. And I think that really helps. And again, that's why it's your niche and that's why it's your specialty. Because I know I, I used to live in the area. And again, my parents have a cottage in, in the area as well. That we get a lot of people coming in from Toronto and around the city to try to sell properties, and they don't even know about cottages. Never mind which, what are good, what lakes are good, what to look for. So that makes a huge difference. I know on the that's consumer right. side of it. And the time of year when you're looking at lakefront property really matters. If you go look at a property in the spring when the lake is very cold and no algae or weeds have developed yet, then you think you're buying a beautiful shoreline. And then come August when the lake gets warm and everything starts to grow, you find that you don't have the best shoreline. So it is really important to you know find an agent that knows that area, that knows that lake, 
and also to be searching in the late summer is a good idea if you're concerned with swimming. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I know when I started, I was on a team. Um, and one part of our team was in Peterborough. And I know one of the clients, or sorry, they had the listing and they'd sold it. And the buyer was a city agent. And they came in, sold them a property. And their clients didn't know anything about well and septic. The agent didn't know anything about well and septic. So they bought this cottage and they moved in and they came back and said they were complaining that the septic was bad and they came back and the whole thing was plugged. I guess they had 20 or 30 people at a party on their little septic system and oh, yeah. it clogged the whole thing. And then they came back and they were saying, oh, you didn't tell us. And we said, y- y- you don't even know what a septic system is or how to work it. And they had no, no idea. So having- Well, that's funny you bring that up too because that's very seasonable, seasonal as well. If you buy a property in dead winter, there's no way that we can have the septic uh, pumped or inspected. So you are kind of gambling. Of course, we'll put the warranties and representations in the offer, but you are taking a bit of a gamble. If you buy in the spring or in the summer, um, we can have a septic inspection, no problem. Yeah. Do you do you find the the types of properties that are, people are buying, are they buying them with the intention to fix up, to hold on to? Like what's people's – like I know years ago people would buy a, a family cottage and it would sit for three generations, four generations, and it would be passed on. Are, are people taking that more of like, I'm going to buy it for six months or six years and hold on to it and sell it? Or are people buying still and, and holding for, for years? Well, I think like the waterfront market is so good. Like I said, I, I see every everybody upgrades. Yes. I see that people come up and buy a starter cottage and gets their foot in the waterfront market. And then I, I often almost always see them upgrade a few years later. And mostly people are looking for year round road access. Mm-hmm because they want to be able to cater to these retirees if they were to sell or if or if they're going to become a retiree living up there themselves. Um, and also the size of the lake. A lot of people move up with this dream of being on the lake and um, find out that they've grown out of their lake, you know, so that they often go to a bigger lake for the grandchildren and whatnot. Yeah, they get bigger toys and they want to have more space to use it. And right. Yeah. Up. Okay, so for you, I want to talk about now go a little bit more of the marketing and the business side of it. So how are you attracting these these sellers? Because that can be a t- tough thing, especially if they're not around all year, if they are seasonal. That that might be obviously harder than just a traditional residential in home. So what's, yeah. what are you doing to, to get that? Uh, word of mouth and referrals, for sure. So I think I've been in the biggest business long enough that I'm starting to see a lot of repeat business and and referrals, for sure. I do a lot of business on the golf course, okay. and I do a lot of social media. Okay. Uh, I've kind of uh, steered away from a lot of print advertising, so um, mostly social media. Okay. So are you reaching out to realtors who are local realtors, outside of the area so- realtors, or...? Yeah, um, mostly Toronto realtors. They're selling, these people are selling their homes in Toronto and I'm getting the referral to move them up. Okay. To the water, yeah. So obviously you said about 30% are buyers. Was that higher in the past and then you've shifted into listings or have you kind of held that uh, that percentage? Yeah, it, ha- it was a lot more buyers in the past and it shifted into listings. I... Um, became very good at showcasing my listings and I find that it's a, l- a little bit easier to deal with the sellers than the buyers, you know? Uh, and especially if I have a bulk number of listings, right? So if I have one cottage ad going out, I can often put in 20 or 30 cottages, you know? Yep. So that helps. And I'd imagine too, I mean, I, cause I, because I know the area, there's so many little lakes and things like that. Just the travel time, if you're working with buyers, I know when I was up there, you could be half hour, an hour between each property to go see them. So there's a lot more time traveling with those buyers. So it's definitely a lot more labor intensive working with a buyer. For sure. Yeah. It's wild. I probably spend 15 hours a week in my car, but probably way more actually. Wow. And that's still with that high number of listings. So mm-hmm. it'd be even higher. I'm sure if you had buyers more or more buyers. Exactly. Okay. So for you, where do you see your business going? Like what, do, how do you want it to, to grow and what are you doing with it? Um, I would like to get to my 100 listings, okay. so that's one of my goals. I'll continue to work through that. I'm noticing, or I'm just realizing, I don't know why, I'm just realizing this 10 years into the business, but I need to be selling some bigger price points, right? So I'm trying to target 
the 500 to a million waterfront properties, and I do have uh, seven or eight listings in that price range right now, so it's, so it's working. Right. So I'm just starting to realize, get a little bit smarter about my business that I have going on. This just uh, started for me a couple years ago, and it's amazing. It's amazing how many referrals are coming in from the city. So I wish I would have fostered that a little bit earlier, and I'm very grateful for the agents that have been helping me out. Uh, and I think that that's a huge business, you know, if you can uh, do a good job and provide good service, then you're always going to get the repeat business and the referrals. Yep. So repeats and referrals is, is where I'm at and that's where I um, plan on concentrating. So are you finding a lot of those initial buyers that you had five, ten years ago are now turning into the listings that you've had? Definitely, yes. Okay. yes. So as far as marketing and stuff goes, what's, what's kind of separating you? You said you're not doing print advertising. I know a lot of the older school agents love print advertising and they'll never let they that do. go. What are you doing to differentiate that than you well, said social I, media and that kind of stuff? But I think the demographics in our business are setting me apart in itself. So I'm 31 years old and most of the people at my office are seniors and most of the agents um, in my hometown are seniors as well. So just growing up on social media and everything it can do for me it makes it a little easier for me to keep up on that stuff, but is also setting me apart. Yep. Uh, I did do a TV show a few years ago called My House, Your Money. And I can tell you that my business really took off after that show. So that really helped. Okay. So how did you get onto that show or what was the, the process that brought you to that? Uh, they actually just brought it up at a staff meeting that they were looking for agents um, who had buyers that were buying with the help of their parents. So it was just a quick uh, addition mm -hmm. uh, in front of a video and we got on. So it was three 12-hour days and um, I'm still getting listings from it. And it's still being aired. That was a couple years ago wow. and I still get phone calls all the time saying I'm seeing, on you, seeing you on TV right now. Wow. So that really did help. Um, obviously... Uh, the referrals that I was getting when I lived in Bancroft and I was sending down to Peterborough, now I'm just doing that business. So I'm not referring from Bancroft to Peterborough anymore. I'm, I'm doing the drive and, and doing it myself. So I'm not referring out business anymore right. yep. so in, this, in, in the Peterborough area, okay. yeah. So how much of your time is spent between the two areas then, would you say? Um, hmm. Right now, I would say... 60% Bancroft, 40% Peterborough. Okay. And do you want it to kind of transition more into that or keep it kind of the balance 50-50 or? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not really sure uh, if I have a preference. I'm just going to go where the business is. For the business in Peterborough, is there, other than the off-seasonal price, I mean, the seasonal uh, difference, you said you'd be able to sell in the, in the winter and stuff. Is there a difference in price, a difference in types of properties that you're selling? Yes, um, the price points in Peterborough are a little bit higher, and it's a, it's a much quicker market. Okay. And it's it's a lot of retirees. Okay. Yeah, so I I just took today and yesterday the accredited senior agent course with Chris Newell. Yep, we just had him on the show uh, a few episodes. Yeah, I know you did. Yeah, yeah, it was great. He's great. The course is amazing. I advise anybody to take it if you get the opportunity. So informative. So I do ten. I I do plan on implementing a lot of things I learned and targeting the senior market a little bit more. It's a really big market. Yeah, especially with cottages, they ha they have the money. Yeah, they, they Peterborough has the highest percentage of seniors. Really. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's a good, I, I like Peterborough. Again, I have family in their area. I used to live around the area. I, I lived in Lindsay for uh, for a little bit there. And mm -hmm. uh, it's it's got a good mix. It's a nice place. It's, you get, like you said, you get people coming from Toronto. People are coming up there to retire, but you still yeah. have young families and businesses. So it is, you get a good healthy mix. Whereas some cottage areas, it's strictly cottage and you're at the mercy of just being straight cottage country. So yes. I'm sure you yeah. find that as a difference. So I want to talk about, um, f for yourself, for, for those uh, agent referrals and are you doing anything specifically to get them? Are you doing anything to reward those agents or like what are you doing to help, to help foster that and grow that? Uh, well, I do have a lot of referrals going out. So a lot of these people that um, retired up here years ago are now ready for 
retirement residences or they want to go back to, to where their grandchildren are. A mm -hmm. lot of them move up here, they have this dream of retiring on the water and then they realize they don't get to see their grandchildren once they're born. So I do have a lot of people going back to the city. So I have a lot of uh, referrals going out, which is probably a lot of the reason why I have a lot of referrals coming in. So I do give the business back yep. and I do have a pretty big presence in all of our networking events that they hold in Toronto. So I do make the trek two and a half hours from home. I'm often there about um, once every three weeks or, or a month for, for the networking events and I, and I make them count. Yep. So what are you doing at those events? I'm um, just being myself. I'm and. I think that the realtor community sort of knows how many listings I have, so they, they know that I'm quite capable of looking after their clients. Yep. Um, and mostly I think that there's not a lot of people from our area attending these events or asking for these referrals. Right. So, you know. You've caught that piece of the market because they're, not, right. they're, they're and, stuck staying up there. And it's so easy. Out. I don't know why nobody told me years ago, you know. <laughs> I value these relationships and I and I wouldn't just refer out one of my clients to somebody that I didn't trust, you know. So I, I, I just can't believe how easy it is and how nobody tells you about it. Now, for you, obviously, the waterfront's your niche um, or niche for the American listeners. Um, do you find that's a, a large percentage of a lot of agents' business or is that something that you've done more of just because it's something you want to do or is that something that a lot of agents are just doing? Because it's no, there. I think that a lot of agents prefer residential, uh, a lot less driving. Um, a lot of these agents probably aren't as educated on wells and septics that they need to be to properly inform their clients. Uh, so I, I think a lot of agents prefer not to go near the waterfront side. They're worried about liability and also cost of driving all around and, you know, um, driving your clients weekend after weekend to find a cottage. I think it's much easier to find somebody a residential house, you know, there's a lot more inventory for that. Yeah. So I don't think so. No, there's not a lot of um, people competing for this business. I don't think. Yeah. Now the other thing too is I, I was just thinking about it is you're you're working in that busy time when everyone else is enjoying their cottage and up there and trying to find a cottage. You're out there trying to sell cottages. So when's your? You said your downtime is kind of at the end of the summer. Do you do anything in the winter time to kind of relax or like what's your? Oh sure, you know I do. I, I am learning balance. I'm I'm starting to learn a little bit more balance, but I do have fun. I love the outdoors, and you can often find me out ice fishing or golfing or on the boat. So I spend a lot of time outside. I have um, I live on the water. I live on Baptiste Lake, and the property is Western exposure. So when I have a really long day, I go home. I sit on the deck. I watch that sunset. So you're living the dream. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay. So tell us a quick, the, the weirdest story or the funniest thing you've ever had to happen with something like that. I just want. To... Okay. All right. So I have a lot of them, actually, <laughs> you know, like uh, getting lost in the bush and all these things. But I guess the funniest one or the most bizarre was my very, very first showing. And it was a waterfront property, two acres. It was an hour from my office, way back in the woods. So we get there and we're walking through the woods and all of a sudden I feel all these all these pains all over my legs and I can't figure out where it's this nest. And they went all up my pants. Oh. So I had to take off my pants <laughs> in front of my clients and get all the hornets out. And I was bit twelve times. Wow. So it wasn't very fun, but it's a good story. And guess what? He didn't buy it. Oh, that sucks. Did they end up buying something though? He did. Oh, yes. that's good. That's worth yeah. it then. Okay, so I want to just one more question is if you were a brand new agent and you were trying to get into the waterfront market, so for our listeners, what would be the best advice you would give to someone if they're trying to get started and break into that market? My best advice would be to try to target one area or even one lake. You know how city agents try and target one condo building and they can make a living just from that? Yep. I am doing a lot of driving, which means I have a lot of time spent away from my daughter. I have a lot of gas expenses um, and a lot, a lot of hours on the road. So my advice would be to try to um, even have your niche waterfront market being one niche lake that you know everything about that lake. You know all the residents maybe create a newsletter for that lake. And I think that you could develop a really big business. There's a lot of uh, agents up here retiring, and these agents often um, live on one certain lake and have run that lake. So th uh, there's a lot of lakes up here that are wide open for agents mm -hmm. to be able to come in here and run, no problem. 
So that's what I would do. I try to maybe not uh, expand like I did, but do the opposite. Yep. And mm-hmm. get focused and make that your niche. That's that's great advice. So uh, for the listeners, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you or check out what you're doing then? The best way to get a hold of me would be to go to jillprice.ca. There's links there to my Facebook, my Twitter, and um, my LinkedIn pages. So you can have a look there. It's very easy to get a hold of me by text or email. Okay. Sometimes uh, because of the lack of cell phone service up here, it's a little hard to get a hold of me on the cell phone. But if you text or email, you'll always get a reply within half an hour. Perfect. We appreciate that. So, th- Jill, thank you for being on the show. We uh, appreciate it and uh, enjoy your evening w- w- with the sunset. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show. Bye. Have a great night. Bye.